Fix your hook in the vice and run on your black thread. Cut or snap off the waist. Black thread. So if, if you have a rotary vice which spins, this is another way of wrapping thread around the hook. Pull a bunch of fibres from a black cock hackle after lining up the tips and tie in for a tail. It should be about as long as the hook shank. That's more well, it is tying and I'll just pass that around. I thought this is the fly that's going to tie. Let's have a quick look at that and pass it around. As you can see, the thread is frayed. To take out the damaged section, form a loop, pass the bobbin around it and tie it down. Then you can cut off the damaged part and carry on tying. Well, I think there's a fly that fills tying will match those ones. And I took a little bit of here. So I've, sorry. I've saved my thread from snapping there. Next, tie in the silver wire rib and a few fibres of dyed black cock pheasant tail by the tips. So this is the, the bunch of pheasant tail. Just keep going back to the tail. What do you think, Neil? Take the thread to the thorax position about one third back from the eye. If you have a rotary vice, put the thread on the bobbin cradle or post and wind the pheasant tail up the body. Keep the fibres flat and don't worry if one or two break off. This root device does make things a little bit easier when you're tying fragile things like... Um... Tie the fibres down, keeping them under tension. I nearly lost them there, but managed to tighten them again. Now I've wound... I wound the, um, the fibres that way, so what I'm going to do is going to... Wind the wire rib the opposite way to the pheasant tail to strengthen the abdomen of the fly. You find it difficult to secure it when you do that. I do. You've got to hold the wire really tight. Hold the wire tight while you tie it off. Snap off the waist wire and cut off the waist pheasant fibres. I've just lined them all up. Now take three peacock curls, trim off the tips and tie in. Twist the strand to form a rope and wind the thorax. Three turns should be enough, then trim off the waist. What do you think, Ian? Well, it doesn't really matter what they are. You see a fly. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. Now take a black hen hackle, 
and stroke back the fibres from the tying in point. Tie in with the convex side facing you. I think the biggest mistake a beginner makes when um, and you'll find that the head will you know, be the right side when you get it right. Cut off the waist and wind the hackle towards the eye. Try to keep it on its edge and facing the right way, convex side forwards. Two or three turns should do. To turn. That's the bit that I have a problem with. Well, you can't. If you find it's tip. going the wrong mm -hmm. way. You're tied in by the tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just trim off a few fibres. Mm. So that you just get the stroke. Uh, I'm too strong. Okay. I keep snapping. It's just it's not like that. You have, you, you, you notice there I didn't tie it in by right at the tip yeah. because that was bound to snap. And it just leads to embarrassment when you're sitting here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tie down and cut off the waist. To make sure you just cut the hackle stalk and none of the fibres on the fly, push your open scissors at it. Then the scissors will only cut what is tight. Anything else will just slide out of the way. All you're going to cut is everything that's just tight and that's just the stalk and all the fibres should be okay. I like to protect my hackle with a bit of silicone tubing while I tie my whip finish. This is kept on the shaft of the bobbin holder. Well the other, th well, the other thing is, you've got to remember to put it back on before you cut the thread, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you somehow get it, you can get it back on quite easily actually. What is it? It's a bit of silicone tubing. So that's that one. Cut off your thread and seal the head with a small drop of thin clear varnish. <laughs> 